Okay, so um, the thing about knives is if you don't really know that much about them, um, they really don't seem that complicated. You think, well, it's a knife. Knife's a knife, right? Well, then you start getting into it and you got to worry about steel types and, you know, hand forged versus stamped and all these other things. And you realize it's actually a pretty, pretty deep thing. Sharpening is the same way. So much so that learning how to sharpen can actually be a little overwhelming sometimes. You've got different kinds of stones, different grits, different brands, all this stuff, getting your technique right, including the angle, everything like that. And it can honestly just get really overwhelming really quickly and kind of scares people away. Sharpening doesn't have to be like that. While you can go really in depth, there's really not much you need to start sharpening and get a decent edge on your blades. So this has been my number one most requested video. Especially with every knife video that I post, I've always got multiple people in the comments asking me about a knife sharpening video. I've kind of been putting it off, making sure I can get my technique honed just right, things like that. And I think it's time. So for the holiday season, my gift to you guys, I'm gonna show you a very simplified way to sharpen knives. Okay, so um, this is uh, on my camera, slightly off center. Um, just because the equipment I have, hopefully in editing I can, you know, zoom this in and center it up a little bit and make it still look good. Um, but I'm basically hugging my tripod right now in front of me so that I can show you guys this. Um, so the first thing uh, that is really confusing with sharpening is stones. So now there's plenty of stones you can get and you can definitely get a lower or higher in grit depending on what you need and how crazy you want to get with it. But just for starting off, you need one stone a 1000 grit stone. Now I have a double sided stone and you can see it's dished a little bit here um, from where I've been using it a lot. Um, we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But yeah, you want a stone, preferably you want one that either comes with a holder or you want to buy a stone holder. And I have a separate stone holder here. And now as far as the brand goes, um, the stones that I have are not actually the ones that I recommend. And that's not that these are bad stones, it's just that these are what I bought at the time that were available to me. I bought them at a store locally rather than, you know, because I didn't want to wait to buy something online. Um, I will leave a link to what these stones are if you're interested in them. And then I will also um, leave links to stones that are actually widely recommended, um, not just through my community, but through the greater um, knife sharpening community and stuff like that, so that you'll know where to go. But to start off, you just want a simple 1000 grit stone. Now, we have a cut cone knife. Now I am sharpening these knives for a friend. I've got a couple more back here. We're just gonna focus on this guy today. We're, uh, we're gonna get into these in another video soon because I got a lot to say about them. But uh, you know, for now, this knife, this knife is not sharp. So with your knife, the most important thing is technique. A lot of people get crazy about finding the right angle, but while the angle does matter, it's more important to maintain your angle. In general, if you're not sure, you can do 15 degrees. It's a good kind of average middle ground angle that you can start sharpening at. If you're not sure about figuring out 15 degrees, what's also heavily recommended, um, I think even Bob Kramer recommended this, was use about the width from the blade to the spine about the width of a matchbook. Different people come in with different ways. I like starting pushing away and then later on I'll pull in. So we're gonna start like this. And your hand that's on the handle, that's just gonna be helping guide. The hand that, that's actually gonna be doing all the moving is your hand that's actually on the blade. So you come in at our angle. And just to start, Just like that. And there's no, there's no set number of times that you need to do this. It's actually what you're gonna do is you're gonna do this until you form a burr on the side. And we'll get to that in a second. Now you also wanna keep pressure on the part of the knife that you're working with. So you can walk your fingers up and down the blade as you move across. And now periodically, um, you're going to get a sludge buildup, and you and a little bit of this is good, 
but you just want to make sure the stone is staying wet so I usually just dip my hand in some water and just sprinkle a little bit on there it doesn't have to be a lot and it really shouldn't be a lot I really could have started with a lower grit stone um, and that is one thing that we want to you know talk about just a little bit um, a thousand grit stone is kind of the baseline but if you've got a particularly dull knife um, it definitely is beneficial to have a lower grit stone. I've got a 400 grit right here. And that's gonna, t you know, lower grit stones, they're just like sandpaper. Lower grit means they're rougher, higher grit means they're finer. Um, a lower grit stone is good for starting a really dull knife, so you can get that like excess of metal and start putting an edge back on it just a little bit. And then you can hop up to your 1000, then if you really want to, your 3000s, your 5000s, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna hit this with the uh, 400, just to speed up my process, and we'll come back to the 1000. Okay, so um, I definitely had to go back to my 400 grit and knock some of this uh, knock some of this blunt metal off, and then I came back with my 1000 and got to where we need to be. So um, you'll see that you know some crud's kind of uh, accumulated on here. That's fine. You know, it's kind of normal. You're gonna see that. Um, the main thing though is, and this is how you know when you need the flip sides. So if you run your finger across the blade. You'll start feeling a burr. It's going to feel kind of rough. Basically that means that you've knocked off the requisite amount of metal and it's good to switch sides. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit more water on this. And this time I'm going to be coming down this way. I'm holding it like this and then I'm going to have my fingers on the blade like this. And you want to try to use as much of the stone as possible when you're doing this across the whole blade. And now, obviously, that's not going to be totally possible. But the reason for that is your stone will start doing what's called dishing, where it's essentially, like I showed you earlier. It's almost like a skateboard half pipe. And now, as this happens, one of the things you can do, I actually don't have one, but I do recommend getting one. I'm gonna get one very soon. It's getting a flattening stone. So after every time you sharpen, you can run your flattening stone over that and re-flatten the stone. And now you'll hear too, that the stone's starting to make kind of a really scratchy sound. And that means it's time for more water. You wanna make sure the stone stays pretty wet. So just periodically, throw some more water on it. This is such an awkward position. Cause like I said, oh, um, I'm pretty much hugging my tripod right now. So I can try to get a good angle on this. And also my table wobbles just a little bit against the wall. So I'm like hugging my tripod while having my, my pelvis just like pushed up against the, uh, the table. So it stays against the wall so it doesn't rattle. This is a very, uncomfortable position and now if you're not comfortable with doing full motions it's okay to work in sections especially because at your tip and at your heel you're gonna it, you're gonna feel the burr develop more in the center before you do on either side here just because they're making you know you see they're making less contact with the stone than the center part is so it's okay to come across and do that real quick and then take your heel and just come down like that if you have to. Got a pretty good burr developing here. So um, we want to deburr. So if we keep sharpening back and forth, we're just going to push that burr, you know, from one side to the other. So the side that the burr is on. So we did this way. So the burr developed on this side. So now we're going to flip it back over. Instead of pushing, we're just going to pull. Do that a couple times. Feel for the burr. You might have to do this a few times. And then sometimes you will feel it get pushed to the other side. Not a big deal. You're not going to use a lot of pressure when you do this. And you can even flip back and forth a couple times as you need to. Get the burr pretty sufficiently removed. Um, it will sometimes still feel just a little rough. And the last thing you wanna do 
and this isn't always uh, talked about in other sharpening videos, but it makes a huge difference, is you want a strop. You can strop on any sort of leather. I've seen people do it on cork. I've even seen somebody do it with a sponge. Um, I prefer to actually use a leather strop specifically designed for doing this. You'll see this side uh, looks a little different just because this is where I use my stropping compound and you don't always need stropping compound but it does make a difference and if I can find mine I've got a stick of stropping compound they also make it in sprays and this stuff works really just like a crayon so you're just gonna throw it on there and I forget what exactly it is there's something in stropping compound let me say it's like magnesium or something like that or magnesium um, some sort of like tiny metal bits to help really remove the microburrs that are left over on this. And so just like with the deburring, except much, much more lightly, you're just going to pull the knife back and forth. And you're going to do this a few times. And no matter what grit you went to, while sharpening, whether it be 5,000, 8,000, 10,000, I always finish with a strop because it still makes a huge difference because it just really helps polish that blade up. Let's go back to our piece of paper from earlier. So, it's not perfect, and that's okay, because the paper test, it tests sharpness, but it also helps you determine any spots that you may have missed. It's really good for finding inconsistencies in how you sharpened. So that's another really good reason for the paper test. But for the most part, this thing is doing really great. So I'm going to personally take this up, probably another grit, um, just because I'm sharpening it for a friend. It really doesn't need it, but you know, it's for the homies, and they were paying me to sharpen their, their knives, and I forgot, and took forever. Um, so I'm actually not going to charge them, and I'm going to put a little bit of extra love into these for them. Um, so that's about it for how you sharpen. Um, let's get back to my face for a second so we can talk about a couple things. Okay, so sharpening, like any other skill really, is just something that requires practice. And it's easy to get intimidated by, but if you just start doing it, you'll get it down. So just keep at it. So I do want to recap everything we talked about, maybe mention a couple things I forgot to mention. First off, as far as technique goes, uh, number one, practice on cheap, if you've got good knives and cheap knives, practice on your cheap knives first. Um, that way, if you really fuck up somewhere, you fucked up a cheap knife not going to be that big of a deal. Maintaining the angle that you're sharpening at is more important than finding the proper angle. Good way to start if you're not sure what angle the knife is, do about 15 degrees or the width of a matchbook. As you sharpen and continue to sharpen, you're going to feel that burr develop on the edge. Once you feel that burr all down the blade, that's when it's time to flip over and start sharpening again. Once you have the burr on the other side, go ahead and deburr. And then after you've deburred, you're technically good to go but I definitely recommend stropping. Now again, stropping isn't necessary, but I highly, highly recommend it because it's gonna really make a difference in having a screaming sharp edge. And finally, do a paper test. Now the paper test is good for demonstrating that you properly sharpen your knife and it is sufficiently sharp, but it's also gonna show you any inconsistencies in the blade where you've sharpened it, where you need to maybe go back and touch it up. Equipment, now remember, stone grits work just like sandpaper. A lower grip means rougher and a higher grip means finer. If you're gonna buy one stone, it should be 1000 grit. It's kind of the end all be all stone. And then if you do decide to get another grit stone, go lower first. A lower grit stone is really gonna shorten the amount of time you spend sharpening and reduce the effort. Go for something two to 400 grit usually. And then after you get your lower grit stone, you wanna get something higher grit and get into polishing the knife up a little bit. I'd say maybe get something around 3000. And then of course, get yourself a leather strop. There's all different kinds you can get. I like mine, the paddle style, and get some strop and compound. You can either get the you know, crayon style or a spray. Either way works. And if your stone didn't come with a holder, get a stone holder. Otherwise, you're going to be sliding all over the damn place. And you don't really want that. And finally, as I showed you on my 1000 grit stone, um, it does dish a little bit. starts looking like a half pipe. Um, you do want to avoid that. So this isn't... This definitely is like the last thing I would recommend getting over everything else I just mentioned, but get a flattening stone. And 
something you can use to keep your stone nice and smooth so you don't have to, you know, work the work the angle around differently, if that makes sense. Now, like I said earlier, the stones that I have aren't necessarily the ones that I recommend. They're just the ones that I have. I haven't gotten around to buying my new stones yet, but I'm gonna link those. I'm also gonna link the most recommended stuff. Um, now, these recommendations come from some uh, really knowledgeable people in my community, which if you wanna meet them, talk to them, learn more about that stuff, you can join my Discord, which I'll link that down below. But these are also, if you get like on Reddit or any knife forums, these are consistently recommended as, you know, the, the best stones. So I think that about wraps it up. Um, like I said, you guys have really requested this one and I really wanted to get it out to you. So shout out to everybody on Patreon that's been helping me out and making sure that I can keep making these videos, helping me pay my bills. If you're interested in joining, you can join for as little as $1 a month. You get early access to every video that I post. And then additionally, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Want to see pictures of the cat, hear stupid thoughts that I post, things like that. I'll leave everything down, as always, in the description below. I think that about covers it. Love y'all. I'll see you soon.